Han Lin is an ugly lonely orphan who lost his mother in a car accident and was left with his father's gambling debt. While celebrating his 18th birthday, God broke into his apartment and teleported him to the spiritual world, giving him the War God system. This system will unleash his godlike potential, unlocking a cheat skill to level him up faster than everyone in this world. And because of his spiritual eyes, God gave him a recommendation letter to study at the top magic academy. But before leaving, God asked if An Lin was truly worth doing this for, but flew off laughing because he finally got rid of his unlucky curse. The spirit of the war god system appeared, and commands him to help the human stuck inside of the teleportation portal. An Lin raises his hand and tries to absorb the enormous energy, but the hottest girl appears from inside and steps on top of him. She helps him up and introduces herself as Xiaolin, but tells him that they must hurry, so she drags him into the portal and An Lin realizes that his life is finally going to get better. Inside the Magic Academy, they notice everyone rushing to take the aptitude exam, a test that decides a person's class from 1 to 100 by touching a mirror called the Lustrous Divine Monolith, and they see a man named Cheng unleashing the greatest aura. Next is Xiaolin's turn, and she touches the monolith, releasing an enormous amount of energy descending from the heavens. She was also assigned first class, but An Lin's turn finally arrived. He handed the instructor his recommendation letter, and she was shocked to find that it's from Master Lu, the legendary master that achieved immortality above gods. The numerology instructor assesses his power, and announces to all of his peers that An Lin will bring miracles that shock the entire spirit world. All of his peers chant his name, and An Lin knows he's going to finally be an anime protagonist. However, this is a Chinese anime, so he achieves the greatest miracle of all. Throughout all of history, he's the only person to ever have no magical power, and he's going to enter the highest class. All of the students are outraged, so one of them screams that he's a cheater and wants to fight him. But Xi Allen grabs him and starts flying away, apologizing because she's brought all this hate upon him but promises that she will protect him from now on. Later that night, An Lin investigates his war god system to see how he can level up. The system gives him a list of cheat quests that would help him level up a year's worth by completing a few tasks. The first quest involves the host completing 10 push-ups, so An Lin cranks them out with ease. Immediately, the system levels him up and upgrades him to the first stage, and his strength dramatically increases, allowing him to do push-ups with a single finger. For his second quest, he needs to do 10 plus 10 push-ups, so An Lin completes the 20 push-ups. He levels up to the second stage immediately, and the next quest is to do 10 times 10 push-ups. An Lin completes them with inhuman speeds due to his new strength. To upgrade to the fourth stage, he needs to do 10 to the 10 push-ups, a total of a billion. An Lin realizes that it would take him a thousand years of doing it, so the system offers him the hint. Xiaolin might be able to give him some advice, so An Lin decides to head out to meet with her. While leaving his house, he's glad to have such an amazing cheat leveling system, but a mysterious spy tries to ambush him. With his spirit eyes, An Lin quickly uses his reflexes to dodge the strikes. The enemy's speed nearly overwhelms An Lin, and even though he can see the trajectory of his strikes, blocking them still sends him crashing against the fence. With a dash of speed, he vanishes and begins dizzying his opponent, flashing next to him to land a devastating strike. He asks the man why he ambushed him, and he realizes it's Dabao, the guy from earlier. Dabao wonders how An Lin reached the third stage already and activates a talisman. The system warns him that his life is in danger, and the talisman's energy prevents him from moving. The system encourages him to use a last resort risky option. The seal's energy disperses throughout the field, and Dabao sends the mana hurling towards An Lin, but a sword strike destroys it. Xiaolan appears and prevents him from moving and An Lin is excited to see her. However, they hear a man's voice screaming for An Lin, and they see the real Dabao trying to challenge him. Shocked by what they're witnessing, the imposter vanishes in front of Xiaolan and tries to strike her, but An Lin fends off the blow. A red aura appears as it absorbs the opponent's energy, and An Lin casts his heavenly gateway, allowing Xiaolan to strike towards the opponent and causing him to flee. The backlash of the move destroys An Lin's core, and he struggles to breathe, thinking that he will break. Dabao has finally found An Lin to challenge him, but Xiaolin sends the fear of God into his soul, and he runs away. She tells him that she will take care of him. He says he meant he will break through the fourth stage, and she's glad she heard him wrong. They stare at the sky together, and she apologizes for putting him in danger. She reveals that she came to this academy for a reason. She's always wanted to obtain the powers of protecting someone 
and wishes to protect An Lin until the day he becomes amazing. She promises she won't make any mistakes, and An Lin grabs her hand. The status of their bond increases to 60%, and the status of love at first sight has changed to sleeping on the first night. And my jokes are probably giving you a fright, but it's okay because An Lin has the strongest might. <laughs> The next day, An Lin struggles to stay awake. The fear of having another person ambushing him kept him up all night, and when he tried telling the instructor, she warned him that he's everyone's enemy, and she will also be extra strict on him. He notices people are speaking slyly, and the system encourages him to use his spirit eyes to hear closely. Every single one of them wants to beat him up and they want to steal Xiaol and away from him. At class, An Lin is shocked that the instructor is a teacher, but Waifu number 2 enters the chat. An Lin is shocked that he can't see her level, and Xi Aolin is glad that he only cares about her level and not her beauty. An Lin gets a better look and thinks he wants her in his harem. She walks past him and gives him an affectionate stare. Poor Xi Aolin is getting c***ed. Cheng walks in and the guy behind them thinks he wants to swing the other way, and try it for a day, because a man a day keeps the doctor away. And these shitty rhymes are probably driving you astray. Cheng gives him a cold glance, and An Lin thinks it's unfair because they've got great faces. But he tells Xi Aolin that she's hot as well but he's not jealous of her. Xi Aolin didn't see that one coming, and the class commences. Everyone begins meditating and An Lin has no idea what's going on, but uses his spiritual eyes to see their auras levitating towards the heavens. It's unfortunate that he isn't able to learn, but Xi Aolin promises that she'll tutor him after class and give him a very hands-on lesson in anatomy. Throughout the day, An Lin wonders why all his instructors are inanimate objects, but Miss Giant Plot finally enters. An Lin is glad to see some legs walking, and the instructor appoints him as the representative of the class. They will be learning of the mortal world, and she gives everyone a phone, telling them to play with their phones for the rest of class. An Lin notices how distracted everyone is, and gets angry because he's not learning anything. She tells him to be glad that they're just getting to play games all day, but An Lin wishes he was learning something. The numerology course begins, and the instructor is finally teaching them like a proper class. He then goes on to say that they will go to sleep for the entire class and write down their dreams. He counts to three and An Lin begins falling asleep, but the last words he heard from the instructor were that a bloodbath was waiting for him after waking up. An Lin tries to come back to consciousness by hearing a heavenly woman's voice, but when he wakes up, he sees Xi Aolin trying to wake him up. It's magic class now and the instructor is going to hold a magic duel to help everyone cultivate their magic. An Lin realizes that everyone's going to try beating him. The instructor calls Cheng up, the class monitor, and then calls An Lin up for the duel. The words of the numerology professor finally make sense, and he walks towards the challenge. Xi Aolin stops him and begins trying to spar against Cheng instead. She casts a fireball, but Cheng blocks it with his bare hand. Her agility allows her to backstep into a kick, but after he blocks it, she sprints away to try and flank him with her fire blows. But he gracefully evades and strikes her back. She continues relentlessly trying to strike him, but his agility stops all of her attacks. A fiery aura engulfs her body, and she flies into the sky, creating a phoenix from the flames. She rushes towards Cheng, but he activates his secret ability, and a water dome forms, preventing Xi Aolin from penetrating. The system informs An Lin that he should observe closely, and with his spiritual eyes, he notices the weakness in the formation. Xi Aolin unleashes a flurry of fireballs and rushes towards him, striking down to crack the dome. However, Cheng says she hasn't cultivated enough, and his magic circle activates above Xi Aolin, crushing her down with a gravitational attack. An Lin rushes in, utilizing Heavenly Gateway and sending a massive energy explosion. Cheng is shocked that he's still standing, and An Lin casts a red aura onto his hand. Cheng tells him to surrender, but An Lin thinks that delivering a single punch will avoid him receiving a hundred punches. He hurls the mana sphere towards Cheng, but he dodges it with ease. Cheng gathers his magical chains and restrains An Lin along with Xi Aolin. The gravitational circle activates once more, forcing An Lin down. However, he smiles, breaking the chains. Cheng notices the destruction in his formation and realizes that it was his plan all along. An Lin destroys the chains with a golden glow, having reached fourth stage in the middle of the battle. He loses his footing, and the system informs him that leveling up will be different now. For level 5 to 7, he will need to obtain 10, 10 plus 10, and then 10 times 10 spiritual stones. The teacher dismisses the class, 
and Cheng approaches him, saying that he will help him advance his cultivation if he ever needs help. Taking advantage of the offer, An Lin asks if he can have 130 spiritual stones, and Xiaolin thinks it's embarrassing that he's asking others for money. This is all news to An Lin, so he apologizes quickly, but Cheng takes his hand and hands him 1,000 spiritual stones and walks out like a Giga Chad. He asks An Lin if he's also a military nerd on the Burning Iron Forum, and reveals that he's the sub-moderator. This guy is literally a Reddit mod, so the status window appears, giving them the status of butt buddies. With a guy in An Lin's harem, love interest number two approaches and introduces herself as Suzu. An Lin asks her if she could be his girlfriend, but she rejects him because he's too ugly and says she was hoping they could be friends. An Lin tries to play it off cool, but the status forms their bond, giving him the status of stuck in the friend zone. The battle for freedom is upcoming, and the war god system gives An Lin the special mission. If he manages to rank in the top 50, the system will give him a draw at the initial singularity for a random mythical item. However, if An Lin fails, he will be transformed into a pretty girl for a year. He is the only person in the world with these conditions, and cannot reject the quest unless he gets Isekai. He springs up from the nightmare and realizes that he can't keep procrastinating, so he immediately consumes all the spiritual stones, leveling up three times in the process. With his newfound super speed, he tries to create a strategy for conquering the battle for freedom, and investigates the map. There will be more than 50,000 people battling against him, and he realizes that he's basically playing real-life Fortnite. But with his current abilities, his rank is all the way near the bottom. Realizing how depressing his situation is, he thinks that he needs to start making arrangements to become a pretty girl. So the next day, he asks Xiaolin if he can become her girl best friend. She's disgusted by his idea, and he tries to play it off like he's joking, knowing how weird he just sounded. All of his friends wonder why he's been acting weird lately, but An Lin has had enough of this embarrassment and pain. He asks the system to give him any quest so he can continue holding on to his dignity. Because of his determination, the system gives him his next quest. In order to reach the 8th stage, he must defeat an opponent from the 9th stage, but An Lin thinks that it would be impossible to defeat someone like Xiaolin. So in the meantime, he decides to complete some side quests to learn god-level magic. One of them involves collecting the essence of the mountain, but since he's never heard of that, he tries to think of a way to cheat the system. To reach the ninth stage, he thinks he can get Xiaolin to lose to him on purpose, so the following morning, he tries asking her for help. Xiaolin says she's willing to do anything to help him, after all, He's saved her countless times, and in her heart, he's the best person alive. Flustered after hearing her words, he hesitantly asks her for the essence of the mountain instead. After failing, he tried asking Cheng to help him, but he rejected, saying he would only reveal his weakness for a sneak attack because they're best butt buddies. Hearing his words, An Lin knew he could never betray a butt buddy, so he decides to ask Xiaolin one more time. At the most beautiful spot in campus, An Lin gets on his knees and tells Xiaolin that he's been meaning to say this to her but wanted to build up courage first. She asks him what it is. <laughs> Xiaolin wonders if he's just lying because he's too nervous to confess and begins blushing once he's done talking. She tells him that he can of course sneak an attack on her pussy. Sorry I meant she tells him he can sneak an attack on her. That night, Cheng thinks An Lin can definitely defeat her, but wants to prepare him by teaching him his secret moves. The first technique will be to bind her like it's 50 shades of grey. During their meeting the next day, An Lin tells her that he's ready to sneak attack her, but she gets up and walks away before he gets too close. She's brought him the essences he's asked for, but he sees her vulnerable position and activates his magic, tying her down with his chains. Sensational. He tries to explain the misunderstanding, but she runs away screaming, and he thinks he won't ever wash his hands again. She turns around and throws the gift she's brought him, calling him a jerk. He goes back to Chang and cries for being so stupid. After he was done crying, he saw the information Xiaolin prepared for him. While reading it, he ate the mountain essence, seeing the location tracker she'd created so she can protect him. He wishes he wasn't such a jerk and wants to go apologize 
but his stomach starts hurting because the essence is trying to detoxify his insides. Inside the bathroom, the status system informs him that he will have diarrhea for the next 13 days. The battle for freedom is in 10 days, so he will have to somehow battle against others while cleansing his body. Meanwhile, Zayalan wonders if he's going to come and apologize for his actions, so she ends up trying to stay up all night. In the morning, Anlin is questioning all of his life's decisions and wishes he wasn't alive. At school, Anlin is absent for all of his classes, and Xiaolin overhears everyone mocking him for being a lazy coward. Cheng comes to ask him why he missed class, and thinks that an inner demon is preventing him from leaving, so he begins singing his heart sutra to try and drive the devils out. The energy waves spread throughout the field, and Anlin's cleansing begins to speed up. What the fuck am I watching? The rate of his cleansing has dramatically increased, but he begs Cheng to continue coming and doing this every single day. However, Cheng decides to continue singing, and Anlin's insides begin getting absolutely hammered. He finesses the music like he's a DJ, crushing Anlin's mind. Cheng, thank you. You are my God. After a few days pass with Cheng trying to cure his friend from the inner demon, Xiaolin overhears Anlin's pain, but decides to ignore him because he still hasn't apologized. Anlin has released enough fertilizer to feed an entire forest, but when the day of the battle arrives, Anlin still hasn't finished the cleansing. With 3% left on his status bar, a giant dog comes and sniffs his insides. It introduces itself as Dabai and knows that An Lin is struggling, so it tries healing him to feel a little better. The eldest elder introduces himself and explains the rules of the battles. A golden light will be cast around them as protection, teleporting them back into safety if they incur enough damage. He sends all of them into the field. Everyone's jumped out of the battle bus, and Dabo sees that he's been teleported next to An Lin, shocked that he's already entered the seventh stage. He begs An Lin to go easy on him, but An Lin approaches him with threatening intensity. In the split second that he drew his sword, An Lin destroyed it with his bare hand, and is disappointed in him for not carrying the one thing every man needs, toilet paper. He walks off into the sunset, but Wei comes from behind and asks him about An Lin's location. Dabao misleads Wei and tells him that he went the other way, because a misdirection a day can keep- Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Realizing there's insincerity in his voice, he commands Dabao to gather all of the weakest students for him to eliminate. At the same time, Xiaolin tries to locate An Lin's location, vowing that she won't look for him until he looks for her. In the depth of some bushes, An Lin tries to finish the last percentage point, but one of the students locates him and tries to challenge him. An Lin begs him for five more minutes, but a group of four students appear with grudges for defeating An Lin. Since the first person who approached didn't have any grudges against him, they knocked him out instantly. An Lin tries to get out of this situation, so he asks them if they would rather fight each other first so the winner gets all the money. <laughs> While they beat each other up, An Lin tries his hardest to finish the progress bar, and he finally reaches 100%. He has learned the god skill Mountain Quaking Fist. He wakes up as a new man, reincarnated on the inside with a serene tranquility. In this world, he has made friends and began a new life. Who would have thought diarrhea would turn you into a philosopher? They rush towards him, but with his new ability, he launches a blow filled with magical energy towards them, destroying them instantly. Having defeated a person in the ninth stage, the quest has now been completed, and the system promotes him to the eighth rank. Still, with his current position all the way at the bottom, he has no way of reaching the top 50 if he doesn't continue upgrading himself. In order to learn the next god level earth ability, he must ascend Black Rock Peak. But if he wishes to reach the ninth rank, he must defeat 10 ninth stage opponents. Seeing the height of the mountain, he wonders how he could get up there, but Dabao comes running towards him. He wants Anlin's help and takes him back to a secret cave. Inside, the entire class 100 students have gathered, a total of 291 people. He begs Anlin to peacefully eliminate them since he's a person with a weak heart, so Anlin thanks them for being so kind. With a few zesty punches, he eliminates every single one of the students, jumping up 40,000 positions in ranking. But just before he gets to enjoy all the glory, Frozone appears and is ready to annihilate Anlin. 
but a purple blaze of mana incinerates his opponent within seconds. The source of this immense power was Lu, one of the holders of a god's recommendation letter. She is the number one god of killing. She flies next to him and asks him to play a game with her. But when An Lin tells her to stop messing around, she unleashes her massive magical energy to incinerate a tree, striking fear into him. With no other choice, he agrees to play with her, so she asks him to play League of Immortals. Anybody having deja vu of a similar game that has a star guardian hero who looks just like her? Yeah, me neither. He tells her that he would like to play. But her conditions for playing with him are only if he can answer 100 questions correctly. If he does, then he will become a part of the Lu Club. He thinks this bitch is psychotic, but they end up having fun together answering all of the questions. For question 18, she asks him who's prettier, Xiaolin or Suzu. He struggles hard to think of the right answer. What a f***ing L take. Even Lu is pissed off because she thought Xiaolin was his girlfriend. She sees that he's telling the truth and explains that she has the ability to detect a person's lies from their aura. She goes on to ask if she's prettier than Xiaolin and Ann Lin admits that she's prettier. W take. For the last question, she asks him if he would like to be a happy mortal or a lonely powerful mage. Thinking back about his previous lonely life and the amount of friends he's made now, he doesn't care whether he has powers or not. He only wishes to make the world a better place. Lou congratulates him on becoming the first member of her club, but she will not allow him to leave. She wants them to continue playing together for the rest of the tournament, and the system reminds him of the penalty of turning into a girl if he goes along with it. It's impossible for him to eliminate 10 ninth stage enemies, so his only option will be climbing onto the Sky Island. Lou tells him to come already, but seeing her wand, he gets a genius idea and asks her if he could ride her wand all night. Sorry I meant he says he wants to take her to a nice place, the top of the mountain peak. The system increases their bond to 40%, giving them the status, long and rough wand riders. Xiaolin wonders how he made it up there, and the giant cookie monster dog appears, telling her that instead of cookies, he wants An Lin's number two. She asks him what he means by that, and he reveals that An Lin's been struggling with cleansing his insides for the last 10 days, allowing Xiaolin to finally realize the actual reason he hasn't come to apologize. But just when she smiles to herself, Wei approaches and threatens to defeat her. Meanwhile, An Lin is riding Lu's hard wand until they arrive at the peak of the mountain. The system begins commencing the absorption of the earth power so he can be stronger than a spiritual nurturing cultivator. With 24 hours remaining, the system recommends for him to think of a way to ambush Lu, but he sees that they have another enemy waiting for them. Chen Chen introduces himself and leaves, telling An Lin that he's been waiting for him this entire time, and vanishes before their eyes, casting a spell onto Lu. She no longer has any memory of what just happened, and tells An Lin to start playing already. They spend all night playing League of Immortals and she plays as her favorite character. I knew she was f***ing Lux. After losing all of the games, she begins recoding the game to unlock some cheat skills, and tells him to thrust his wand into her as hard as he can. Lu reveals that her goal is to create a gaming company in the mortal world, and An Lin promises that he will help her succeed. Their bond deepens, but the status window reveals that there's only 5 minutes left until his cultivation is complete. The sun rises in front of them, and as Lu smiles, the system warns him to prepare for the ambush. Lu reveals that she's never enjoyed herself this much in her life, and asks him if they're friends. He tells her that he considers them to be friends, and she tells him that she's glad he's her first friend. She's never had any family, and has been treated like a tool her entire life. An Lin promises that he would never abandon her, and wants to stay with her until they change the way of the world. She thinks his words are the sweetest thing she's heard if they were sincere, but she reminds him that she can tell the truth. Ever since they've reached the mountain peak, his aura has been murky, and if he was just cultivating, she still doesn't understand why he would have been practicing this entire time. The system suspends his absorption so he can tell the truth, and An Lin goes on to say it. He's been cultivating his power so he can ambush her. Using her eyes, she can tell that he's saying the truth. She walks away from him and summons her magical wand, casting a giant light, her ultimate flash. The system has finally completed learning the new spell, the Earth Lotus Divine Art. An Lin screams at her to just believe in him already. The magical energy from his ability brightens the entire field and destroys all of her defenses. She casts her wand once more, sending a slash towards him to knock him back into the tree, pointing her sword at him. He promises that it was just an accident, and she sees that he's telling the truth. 
She asks him to explain why he's been lying to her this entire time. So he goes on to reveal that he has a secret he's never told anyone before. Inside of his body, he has a secret system that acts like a software, and once the progress bar is full, he will level up. She gets angry at how he was mad at her for cheating, when he's been cheating this entire time. He thanks her for understanding his situation and tries to run away, but she gives him a girly headband saying that it will give him immunity from spiritual attacks. The only thing she still wanted to know was whether he was being honest about being her friend. He called. However, she knows his friendship was sincere and is glad to have found a new friend. The system strengthens his bond with Lou to 80%, giving them the status Diarrhea Buddies. Seriously, what the fuck is this cursed system? It's worse than the fake fans running among us, so help me confuse all of them and destroy this cursed system by spamming rip the toilet paper in the comments. The fake fans will never expect it. While falling from the sky, the system alerts him that with his new power, he has a 91% chance of reaching the top 50. But as he fell down, a magical attack hurled towards him and knocked him aside. The number one competitor, Wang, screams for Chen Chen to appear so they can settle today's duel. If he continues trying to avoid him, Wang promises to destroy every student on the field. At the same time, An Lin's tracker activates to notify him that Xiaolin is in trouble. They have subdued the dog and cornered Xiaolin. Wei commands her to distance herself from An Lin, but she tells him that his hatred is born of jealousy and that he won't be even worth a finger of Anlin's. Angered by her statement, Wei readies his magic to destroy Xiaolin, but Anlin flies from the sky, creating a fog as he rescues both of them. Wei's lackeys are ready to attack him, but Wang's lightning finally strikes down, eliminating thousands of students with a single magical cast. A lightning bolt hurls towards Chen Chen, but its impact has no effect on his meditation. Anlin has managed to survive the strike because of his headband, but its durability wears out. He sees that Dabai is severely injured, and Sai Allen explains that Wei was also the person who disguised as Dabao to ambush him. After hearing that, Anlin stands resolutely in the face of his enemies, vanishing towards his lackeys to defeat them with a single strike. With Wei being the only person left, Sai Allen reveals that he was also the person who put a bounty on his head. So Anlin punches him out of existence. With all of the lackeys defeated, Anlin has finally finished the random practice leveling up quests, reaching the ninth stage. Xiaolin thinks she's about to blow him so hard. He apologizes for not talking to her sooner and she accepts his apology. But Wang announces that he will destroy the whole field if Chen Chen doesn't show up in three seconds. As he counts down to one, Suzu appears and Wang thinks he's found the love of his life, but she calls him ugly and disgusting. The emotional damage lands a critical strike, so Cheng restrains him with his chains, but he breaks out of them easily. Suzu's attacks have almost no effect on his invincible body, so Cheng tries to cast his ultimate ability with all of his might. He requests all the people from the field to offer their powers and absorbs it, but his efforts are meaningless, as Wang breaks away with ease and nullifies Suzu's attacks. Wang asks her if she would like to go on a date with him after the battle, but she stabs his spear into her head because she'd rather unalive than talk to him. You're a victim! Mm. Cheng laughs at him, but his mocking tone infuriates him to release his powerful strike. The divine beast flies towards Cheng, and even though he tries to block it with his shields, Wang's abilities overpowered them, destroying his barriers and defeating him. The lightning strikes begin to attack every student once more, and just as one of them is about to strike An Lin, Chen Chen destroys it with the tip of his finger. In the span of less than a second, Chen Chen asks him if he's learned that move yet, and disappears once more. The system pops up again, informing him that there are only five students left, and his chances of reaching the top 50 are 1 in 10,000. If he wishes to win, he must defeat Wang. He tells his friends that they may end up calling him sister soon like James Charles, and screams for Wang to face off against him. Xiaol and tells him to stop being so reckless, but he punches her gut to eliminate her, and faces off against Wang, stating that he will be the person who defeats him. After not finding Chen Chen this whole time, Wang puts all of his energy into the blow, and the status warns An Lin that his attack carries life-threatening power. But An Lin already knew this, and tells Dabai to wait outside. Because after all, this is An Lin's fight. The fierce divine lightning beast rushes from the sky towards An Lin, and he strikes his mountain quaking fist. But the god level ability has no effect. With no hope left, he closes his eyes with the dragon approaching him, and he remembers Chen Chen's words telling him to learn the move. The system congratulates him on unlocking the Heaven Splitting Finger Pack, and he activates it immediately.
the light pierced through the heavens, and Wang's body was teleported into the middle of the recovery field. At the same time, An Lin had been burnt to a crisp, but had reached second rank, and Liu wondered if An Lin was just going easy on her, because she couldn't bully him anymore. After that battle, however, An Lin wouldn't regain his consciousness for 10 days, but when he finally woke up, everyone tried spending time with him until he recovered, and the system awarded him a legendary alloy for completing the quest, along with the almighty technique for being loved by everyone, and hundreds of gifts from all of his friends at school. A month later, the principal revealed that the demon lord had managed to escape his seal into the mortal world, and all the students whispered to one another about how An Lin replaced Wei's spot, causing him to swell in anger. He remembered meeting with one, and screaming at him for not being able to rig the system so he would be the one sent in the mission. But Wang summoned his divine magical dragon, and crushed Wei down, telling him that he can't compare it all to An Lin's powers. The eldest elder announced that the three disciples who will be entering the mortal world will be An Lin, Xia Alin, and Cheng. With everyone chanting him as the greatest man alive, An Lin decided to unleash his genius new plan, and told them that he'll be creating his own cryptocurrency for the biggest rug pull of all time. At the same time, Liu came to reveal that they will be starting an esports team, but as she spoke to the crowd, Xia Alin remembered the headband he was wearing, and realized that she'd been getting caught this entire time. When the festival was over, Wei saw how everyone glorified An Lin, but there was one thing that comforted him. Because before Wang left him that night, he revealed that the only thing that awaited An Lin in the mortal world was certain death. Even then, he cried at the fact that he was irrelevant now, so the system awarded An Lin one of the strongest powers, the cry baby skill, because he made one of his enemies cry. Liu came and started telling him that they were about to become millionaires after they finished scamming everyone, and Cheng realized that Xia Alin was too busy getting fucked, so he decided to walk away. But Xia Alin noticed that Liu had given him a little ring, and she told him to make sure he wears it all times. Once she was gone, the numerology instructor appeared before An Lin, but he remembered that this fucker only gave him news that destroyed his life, so he ran away before getting cursed once again. After he disappeared, however, Xia Alin asked the numerology instructor if she could know what he was going to tell An Lin, leaving him shocked. At the dimensional rift, Liu begged him to buy her a Bitcoin mining graphics card, so he told her that he was going to mine something else with his drill before walking away. But Xia Alin still felt uneasy. She remembered the numerology professor saying that An Lin's journey would be filled with unavoidable dangers and death both in his past and in his future. All of his efforts will become futile, as if they were a drop of water in the rain. She saw the way a spirit nearly consumed him, but An Lin asked her if she was okay, so she pretended like she was fine. Cheng opened the dimensional gate between the worlds, but pink arms rushed from inside to drag An Lin, and Xia Alin jumped to latch onto him. His friends tried running to protect him, but Cheng told them that he'd be the one going after them, and disappeared into the rift. Xia Alin kept trying to wake An Lin up, but the arms began wrapping around her, knocking her unconscious. The war god system attempted to warn him that his life was in danger, but zapped him back into consciousness. He saw the way he was falling from the sky, and tried hanging onto Xia Alin. But the system told him that his life was in danger, and started counting down from 10 as he fell from the sky like a meteor. In the last instant, he activated his earth lotus magic, and a flower was climaxing until it ascended from the earth, and transformed into an immortal spirit. However, An Lin brushed past it, and as he fell down, he sucked the flower into him before crashing. The impact allowed Xia Alin to finally wake up, and Cheng rushed down to make sure they both made it safely, and healed An Lin as soon as he got next to him. He was glad that they were both safe, but An Lin begged him to penetrate his back with his fingers one more time. What do you mean by that? Xia Alin was angry that he wanted every character in this show except her, but they heard a girl's voice crying. So An Lin took out a mirror and realized that a flower was crying right above him. However, it disappeared when a large battleship appeared, and the girl commanding the ship introduced herself as Tian and commanded them to board the ship. Back inside the fortress, An Lin tried introducing himself as the leader of the Divine Messengers, but she laughed in his face, calling him a weak ugly bastard. However, those words didn't sit right with Xia Alin, and she asked her why she invited them if they weren't welcomed. Tian got up, telling them that she didn't invite them, but commanded them to enter here, and called them powerless insects. Xia Alin activated her flames to attack Tian, but Tian countered by summoning her whips around her. So before things escalated, the war god system told An Lin to activate his almighty technique to suppress their souls, 
and as they were about to launch towards one another, they were frozen in their place in that moment. However, the source of this energy was Cheng's magic, and he told Tian that he can tie her down in more ways than one, so he asked for her phone number and actually got it. That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Cheng told Xiaolin to avoid risking her life over an argument, and Tian felt her floodgates open from his maturity. The building around them began to shake, and Tian told Anlin that their world is only in danger because of them. A week before entering the mortal world, the War God system asked Anlin if he was happy to return to his home, but he revealed that he was afraid. However, he swore to protect Xiaolin, so the system said that it will always have his back if he was ever in a dangerous situation, and told him to never lose himself before returning his soul to his body. The spirit wished for An Lin to become the original person he was, because for him, the spirit promised to change the entire world. Once they finally reached the headquarters of the compound, Tian introduced them to the leader of their army, and she welcomed them as the president of the alliance, Yuan. When he heard that name, An Lin remembered that she was his idol crush before reincarnating, and climaxed his pants. Xiaolin revealed that she's heard about her soul attacks, and An Lin told her that she's tormented his soul for years now. Poor Xiaolin literally can't stop getting fucked. Xiaolin told An Lin that the man in front of them was going to be hard to fight, but An Lin was having a hard time with something else. Yuan revealed that they have all gathered here today because they're going to be embarking on a mission, which is to eliminate the demon cult. However, Shiguo told them that they were weak and useless, so they only brought them here to send them home. The warp gate opened, and Yuan told An Lin to relay a message for her from the mortal world and that is that cultivators aren't ever going to be welcomed back into this world. After she let those words out, however, the alarms began going off with a blood god level, so An Lin begged her to help them if they could, but Shiyugo told them to head back to their home already, and launched a water attack towards them. Immediately, Cheng unleashed a barrier to defend them from the attack, and challenged the director to a battle in order to assist them in this fight. After letting those words out, the system told An Lin that he should take Cheng's place and pretend to be weak, then launch a surprise attack to overpower his enemy. So after looking through his skills, An Lin agreed and decided to take Cheng's place in the fight. As soon as they faced off against one another, Tian screamed that she's going to be his opponent, and kicked him away, teleporting to keep beating him down without a chance to break away. But An Lin managed to land, holding her fist like a kid. However, she blew him away and lunged her fist forward, exploding the entire floor beneath him. As soon as he gained his footing, An Lin activated his heavenly gateway, and when Tian tried to attack him, all of her power was absorbed into his gate, so she leaped backwards to unleash her ultimate spell and launched it towards An Lin, but all of it was absorbed with his skill. With all the energy he consumed, An Lin got in a track racing position and leaped towards the director with his mountain quaking fist. But before the man could counterattack, An Lin activated his cry baby ability, forcing the man to remember the day when his wife was isekai'd by Truck Kun. Just before the blow could land, Yuan rushed to deflect the blow with her fist and tried calming him down. But An Lin climaxed as soon as he felt her. Yuan was shocked by his power but told him that if he could withstand her soul attack, she will let him pass. But An Lin asked her if she could be nicer because he's been a fan of hers for years. So she promised to reward him with fan service if he succeeded. Yes, with a single movement, she casted her soul attack towards him, and while the energy overflowed towards him, Tian tried launching into the attack. But An Lin grabbed her as she fell unconscious, and hesitated until he activated his almighty technique. Before their eyes, they saw An Lin descending from the sky with a heavenly aura, and the War God system informed him that his wish becomes absolute in this world when he activates this ability. Once he landed, Shiguo apologized for the way he mistreated him, but Yuan admitted her defeat and thanked him for beating her. An Lin asked her about his fan service, so she asked him what he wanted, but when he hesitated because it might be too much, she told him she's willing to do anything for him and said that she spoils her fans. Yes! Poor Xiaol and nearly had a heart attack because of this dumb ass. Shiguo promised that he'll take care of all of it, and begged his daughter to get along with her future husband, before sending them off into the portal. And Lin unlocked two new achievements, make those who hate you, hate themselves, and cause your own idol to become your fan, to reward his efforts. And Lin was granted perfect level divine vision, allowing him to see through anything in this world. 
Once they arrived at the demon cult's hideout, Tian told him that they're just here to scout the area and determine the enemy numbers. But An Lin noticed a dangerous mist creeping towards them, so Tian tried activating a spell and scanned it with her phone, sending the danger alert to the rest of the facility. Xiaolin tried volunteering to go help An Lin, but after the director rejected her distraction, she remembered the numerology instructor's words and begged them once again to join An Lin in the battle. Deep within the toxic mist, a group of four cloaked people slowly approached An Lin's location, so Tian tried retreating and grabbing onto An Lin, but he wouldn't move. He began using his perfect vision to see the enemies inside the mist, and activated his earth magic to prevent the mist from getting closer to them. Knowing that they wouldn't suspect him diving in, An Lin activated his lotus magic and walked inside, but when Tian tried walking in after him, he came back and pulled her while running away. There was four god-level enemies among them, but when she wondered what they should do, she heard them screaming in pain. An Lin revealed that he didn't only make them start crying, he even made them have diarrhea. What a f***ing legendary combo. When they were attempting to approach him, their candle's flame blew out, and An Lin apologized for ruining their source of light. However, three of them summoned their wings and started flying, but before they could attack him, he used his crybaby magic to make them cry in their place, and ran away. Back at the base, Yuan rejected Xiaolin and Cheng's request to help An Lin, but sent out two legendary masters of the earth magic in his place. But before they could leave, Xiaolin begged them to take her with them, so the director told her to quit screwing around, and commanded one of the men to attack her. As soon as he launched his magic, Xiaolin casted a barrier to block it off. As she struggled, Cheng wondered why she was so persistent, so she revealed that An Lin's life is in danger, and begged him to believe her. After hearing those words, Cheng activated his magic to easily knock them off, and told them that he'll offer his head if this mission failed because of them, before jumping into the rift. Once he left, the alert system went off again, and the other site had been invaded by a girl with black feathers, so Yuan sent all of the reinforcements into that field after seeing those wings. One of the soldiers tried entering the field, but before he could go through, the man was frozen in place. None of their magic stood a chance against the magical power that came out, and a hand ripped through the space-time continuum to create a portal, and flooded the entire facility with a dark fog. The black winged demon appeared, and was glad that she had secured seven more sacrifices, because only three were left at this point. Meanwhile, the dumbass demons were still crying while brown bullets rained from the air, and Xia Allen was finally reunited with Aunt Lin. He wondered how Xia Allen knew he was in danger, but before she could reveal the truth, Tian received an alert saying that the base's signal had been deleted. So they all looked towards Aunt Lin for advice, but he was too depressed to focus on the battle, because he was never going to get fan service ever again. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused. He told them to stay quiet because he heard something. But when he turned his head, a foot smashed into his face and dragged him into the sky. The angel released a magical blow directly into his skull and dropped him for the others to release sonic waves into his ears. The shock knocked him unconscious, so Cheng activated his chains to restrain one of the angels and slashed her down. The other two kept Cheng distracted, so while An Lin was falling, Xiaolin ran forward and leaped to catch him in the middle of the air, but noticed that the fourth member was laughing as he launched a lightning strike down towards them. An Lin's body fell without a sign of life, so Tian's anger grew as she ran to destroy the man, but his lightning struck her down before she could get close. The man started laughing at her, but Cheng fell directly on top of him and tried slashing him down. Xiaolin tried saving An Lin. But when the vampire appeared and screamed at her, she watched as the angel carried him up, and as she was about to bite into him, An Lin activated his almighty technique, forcing all of the angels to lose their will, and gave Xiaolin the chance to slash her down. They wondered if An Lin was okay, but before he could come back to them, a portal appeared in space, and two arms grabbed onto An Lin, taking him away from Xiaolin. When the darkness settled, the angel was summoning a giant dark energy orb, telling her god that everything had been finally prepared, with An Lin lying in the center of the sphere. The war god system tried waking him up, calling him Titan An Lin, and trying to create the spark that would wake him up. By punching his face, it offered him the opportunity to unlock a cheat code, and he agreed for cheating all the way, so the system told him to activate the ring that Liu had given him. It told him to scream Boy of Light, transform, but An Lin thought that was too cringe. However, he decided to scream it anyway, and Liu's arm appeared from the portal. At the same time, Xiaolin fell after not reaching An Lin, but the vampire came to bite her, so Cheng rushed with all of his speed to knock her down. 
the other two angels rushed towards her, and her mind was completely lost. But before the portal could close, Xiaolin summoned all of her energy, and begged to get Anlin back. The dark orb shined with streaks of purple hue, and exploded from above her, allowing the portal to expand for Xiaolin. A girl descended from the sky carrying Anlin, and Xiaolin saw him being carried by Liu all the way down. He tried pinching her to make sure he isn't dreaming, but she told him that he can pinch somewhere else later, and instantly vanished. Within seconds, she slashed the enemies down, freezing them into icicle stones, before teleporting all of them into the same dimensional rift, and grabbing An Lin before he fell onto the ground. The demonic angel asked Liu what she's looking at, and warped her hand towards Liu's head to end her life. However, the flower appeared in the last moment, screaming that she wants some peace for once in her life. The flame knocked her hand away. While the angel thought that Liu was powerful, Liu asked her what she was looking at, and slashed at her wing, teleporting back. After seeing their confidence, the angel revealed that she won't be letting any of them escape, and created a sword that moved down to pierce her head, summoning the mythical dark blood magic. The sacrifice pillars began activating, and she called forth the sword that defies time itself. When the screw hit the ground, a divine weapon appeared, and Tian wondered when she was reincarnated into an off-brand League of Legends game. The demon began walking towards them, but when they all summoned their swords, they saw that they were shaking in fear, and the system told him that it can defy the laws of nature, and even kill the war god system. The screw launched towards An Lin, piercing him and teleporting him next to her, allowing her to stab into his hand. From the center, red energy began consuming An Lin, so his friends rushed forward to save him. But a gravity attack pushed them down and sucked their spiritual power. The Demon Queen wasn't done, and summoned the third divine weapon, sending black hole gravity waves to encapsulate them in a dome of glass. But from all the energy, the girl collapsed, and revealed that the energy released from this formation will swallow this entire world, and even destroy the stars. Her mission was now complete, but Liu thought this was bullshit, because this story wasn't making any sense. She revealed that God commanded her to kill everything that wasn't allowed into this world. Before An Lin's eyes, a system message appeared, asking him to sacrifice a fifth of his life for absolute power. As he said yes, a fairy pressed no for him, rejecting the offer, so the dark aura consumed his eyes. Inside a pool of blood, An Lin wondered where he had traveled to, so the system revealed that this was the sea of his energy. However, the sword began launching chains towards his spirit, and began deleting the war god system. The pain from their separation began crushing An Lin. But a fairy jumped from the inside, landing down. Xiaolin wondered which god An Lin had bothered, but Xiaolin collapsed, along with the rest of them. The spirit warned him not to get closer, because if he did, he'd be caught inside the calamity that would destroy him. A lightning strike nearly incinerated her, but tears began flowing from her eyes, so she revealed she's from a different time, a place where An Lin no longer existed. Her name was Tina, and she revealed that in the distant future, a heavenly calamity ended his life, so she used all of her power to come back here to change the future. This entire time, she'd been trying to save him, and the god was asking Tina if he was the one worth doing this for, before laughing and flying away. This entire time, she's been with him, but she doesn't belong to this world, so because she just intervened with reality after rejecting his offer, this entire world will no longer accept her. The memories of her started disappearing and changing. In every battle, even in every moment they were together, she started fading out of their existence. All the times when she comforted him, and even when he started this journey, she was no longer going to be part of those moments, crushing An Lin's mind. At the very least, she tried giving him her remaining power to save his friends, but An Lin couldn't accept the idea of seeing the words goodbye, so he launched towards her and hugged her, begging her not to leave. He regained consciousness, and Tina appeared in front of him, but the lightning calamity wasn't over, and the final wave was about to begin with the sun rising. She asked him why he cares so much about her, so he revealed that he'll protect her no matter what it costs, but Tina was already running out of time. Because of that, she wished she could tell him how she felt, but since no language in this world could describe her feelings for him, she asked him to promise to meet her again and allow her to become his spirit, so he accepted. After letting those words out, she told him to transform, so An Lin chanted the transformation words, and rose up against the weapons. The rest of his partners began rising, and the three divine swords were finally under his control. So using his perfect vision, he located the weaknesses in the formation, and sent the screw to slash every single one of them, 
causing the entire formation to break down. Finally, she told him to draw the divine sword, and he pointed towards the skies. The demon finally woke up, and was shocked that he'd managed to subdue her calamity. Tian wished she could feel the bone of his sword in that pose, so Xiaolin screamed to encourage him, and he activated the heaven-splitting thrust. With the light shining bright after the calamity, all of them knew they had emerged victorious. Tina came out of his chest, and told him that she's going to issue him the final mission, which will be to go to the Kingdom of Spirits and find her from this timeline. She told him he has to be serious because he can't fail this mission, so he promised that he'll finish. Before long, she faded away, and An Lin cried as he saw her sparkle away. In the following weeks, An Lin's one-on-one -on -one fan service was ruined by his friends, and the Divine Swords acknowledged him, but he couldn't draw any of their powers out, and his system was no longer usable. At least he gained a lot of lightning abilities, and while he suffered memory loss, he still remembered Tina. Watch this next video, till next time my fellow legendary plot masters.